What's up, Facebook and YouTube? We back again, Brother Sanchez and RFG Chosen One, baby. As promised, he back to bless us with some information today. We're going to go into, you know what? Let me stop talking. What you got for us today, my brother? Man, I got a whole bunch of information uh, correlating to the movie series Harry Potter and um, just the similarities of, you know, that series and what's going on with the uh, global government today. So we about to get right into it, man. We ain't going to have no further delay. So first of all, I'm going to let the brother start speaking and then I'll ask him some of the questions as we always do. So brother, bless us with some knowledge. What you got for us today? Well, basically, um, growing up as, you know, children in, um, in this country, I mean, we, we've all been taught that the government was for our good. You know, they, they had our best interest at heart and, you know, voting mattered and all, all this, you know, hoopla. But, you know, as we grew older and became conscious, you know, we know that that's the opposite. You know, they're really trying to destroy us in every single facet of life um, any way they can. So basically with Harry Potter, Harry Potter was a part of a school called Hogwarts. And Hogwarts really represents our global government. The teachers and Harry Potter and the professors are basically the politicians, the global world politicians. And when, as Harry Potter uh, grew older and, and, and grew in wisdom, he understood that some, most of the teachers and the professors were part of a secret society known as the Death Eaters. Well, the Death Eaters, they wear KKK um, suits and uniforms on their head. And what is that? That's the Skull and Bones Society and the Bohemian Society. Every last two weeks of July, the, the politicians in America go to northern, the woods of Northern California, okay, and they get in front of the 40-foot Bohemian owl, and they say praises and rituals to the owl who sees through the fog and sees through the shadows. Because that, that is their god. That's called Moloch, the god of uh, ritual human sacrifice. Okay? So he, he found out that his teachers and professors were part of a secret society. And Harry Potter was actually the chosen one because he stepped out of the matrix and he became enlightened. You see what I'm saying? Because there's a term in Harry Potter called the muggles. The, the non-magic folk were called the muggles. So basically, that correlates over into the, the world we're in. Anybody who's non-spiritual, anybody who's an atheist, who doesn't believe or think in a, uh, a cosmic creator that, that's causing the cosmos, you know what I mean, to, to, to keep going. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Anybody who believes everything that's coming out of the illusion box called the TV, they're sucked into the matrix. That's a muggle. You know what I mean? Oh, I'm going to go out and vote. That's muggle shit. <laughs> yeah. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, oh, uh, this football, this, this football game is really real. It's not fixed. That's a muggle. You yeah. see what I'm saying? Eating, eating flesh and, and uh, beef and pork. You're, you're a muggle. When we look at Harry Potter, we look in that subliminal shit that coincides with our everyday life. Each particular character, each particular individual exactly. has a certain aspect in society. Yep. Break that down a little bit more, brother. That's real deep right there. Harry Potter, um, I believe after, no, during the, the, uh, the third movie and the third book, there was a character named Sirius Black. Okay, out of all the names to give his guardian... And his mentor, his the person who was looking out for him to make sure Voldemort's people weren't going to kill him, his name was Sirius Black. Okay, we got the dark, heavy, he heavily melanated gods from the Sirius star system mm. looking after humanity and trying to give us the serpent wisdom so we can progress throughout the higher dimensions. That's how it correlates from, you know, Harry Potter to the real world. And uh, um, another, another point would be um, parcel mouths. Harry Potter found out he was a parcel mouth when he was 13, and a parcel Ooh. mouth is a, is a person who's capable of speaking to serpents, speaking to snakes. So what does that tell you? That tells you that Sirius Black allowed him and show, showed him the path 
to gain the serpent wisdom so he can speak to the serious gods from the serious star system. And we really need to get hip to serpent wisdom because that's a term y'all going to hear a lot as you grow and the more you learn. And that's the whole reason that the snake, the serpent, was on the top of the uh, Uraeus of the Pharaoh. Exactly. Now, what did the serpent do in the garden? He gave wisdom. He, made, he actually gave them the wisdom that he said was like God. So you see this same serpent popping up in your children's movie. And we love this movie, too. You'd be surprised how much sorcery is into Harry Potter. And as we continue, this rabbit hole going to go real deep. The, um, the antagonist in the movie uh, Harry Potter, the whole series, his name is Voldemort. Okay, the term Voldemort means the lightning that became mortal. So Voldemort is basically Saturn set Satan, Lucifer, falling like falling lightning and falling into a mortal body because he has to have this 666, six protons, six electrons, six neutrons, carbon body in this third dimension. You see what I'm saying? So when he came after Harry Potter, he had to come to this third dimension in a physical 3D body and confront him. And when you look at how Voldemort even looks, he looks like a vampire, you know what I mean? Everything he wears is, is dark, but his flesh is completely pale. Wow. He's, he's the antagonist, he's the evil man, you know what I mean? He's the devil, the, 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 the series is showing him as the devil himself, and he's coming out as not, a, not dark, but pale. Mm. See what I'm saying? Because they know that He's part of the Draconian society. He is a Draconian. He can't get energy from the sunlight, and he's, he's pale. The sun would probably cook him, so he only comes out in the shadows. You see what I'm saying? His, na his name is Voldemort. He, he represents Satan. Satan set Saturn. So when we talk about Harry Potter here, in order for y'all to understand, I do encourage y'all to check the movie out. Now, I have saw it myself. That's why when I hear this brother speak, I can pick up on all the parallels. I fully understand where you're coming from. Now, like me, many of you watched the movie from face value. We couldn't pick out a lot of this stuff. So, I mean, we can go on and on about a lot of mysteries that went right above your head in the movie. And uh, before we get, get out of here, I'm going to let him go on a little bit more about it because I don't know about y'all, but I'm getting a lot out of this, brother. I appreciate this. Man. No, no problem, man. I mean, basically, to sum it up in a broad, broader perspective, um, the Muggles were the Greeks who invaded um, Egypt uh, under Cleopatra's mother, Trophina's rule over all of Africa. And they were considered non-magic, non-melanated, non-connected to the cosmos folk. Mm -hmm. That's who they were. And it was uh, Trophina's decision to give the Greeks our knowledge. You know what I mean? That ended up backfiring on us in the long run, but it's still destiny, and it was still destined to happen. And I know that to be true based on my own studies, that a lot of our people, I'm glad you brought that up, brother. Because a lot of our people are caught in a, a, a hard place when it comes. When we trace our history back, we say we were once great. We had all of the knowledge. In order for anyone else to get the knowledge, it had to come through us. We were gods yeah. and goddesses. Yeah. So now the people that we gave the knowledge to used it to rule over us. But there's a great area in that. Where was the clash? Where was the, the transition phase? When, so to my understanding... That was the first battle between great pharaohs. You had some bad pharaohs, some evil pharaohs. Some wanted to take the knowledge and spread it out for ego, personal gains yep. or whatever. Yep. And that knowledge ended up in the wrong hands. And as a result of that, the world has been haywire today. Yep. So we can see that acted out in that very movie. Oh yeah. And also, you have, you want to touch on that a little bit about that those early wars and how did the knowledge end up? in the wrong hands because we, w we had all of the knowledge back in ancient Egypt. Well, my dad always used to tell me as a child, uh, anybody with absolute power, that corrupts absolutely. 
You see what I'm saying? Ooh, this this world was never really designed or set up for one person or a certain tiny group of people to rule over the whole planet and all of civilization. That makes that causes you to be a left brain thinker. You know what I mean? And and, and you gain a, a huge ego. You see what I'm saying? Uh -huh. This is Mother Earth. You see what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. We're supposed to be providing for the Earth. We're supposed to be human beings buzzing like a bee. The human bee. The human being. You see what I'm yeah, saying? Bu yeah. Buzzing on, flying, flying and floating that's, to the that's next so dimension. Yeah. I've got to cut in on that because yeah. when he say human beings bu buzzing like a bee, when you look at a beehive, there's no leader but the mother. Exactly. The queen bee. Exactly. And that can be considered the earth. She's yep. the queen bee. Yep. Yep. And we're the beings or the bees that's supposed to be making this honey, yep. making this sweet heaven exactly. for us to live on. And that's no no bee above the, the other one. They all no, as a no. working community. As a unit. And, and, and come to think about it, the symbol of when ancient Egypt was at its greatest point, the symbol of the culture was the humble honeybee. Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. Brother, that absolutely. makes so much sense. Yep, yeah, it's deep, man. Um, I actually learned that fact from uh, Phil Valentine about three or four years ago, and that that's, that stuff is deep, man. And, really. and you know what? I could tell you out of my mouth right now, but hey, the same three people he been the name to you right now for I ask him is the same three people that's in my tape back every day. Who, who do you think we should be going to for knowledge when it comes to leadership roles today? I mean, who do you think these three ideal leaders for the people should be? With me, I don't care about a, how, how a person looks or, you know what I mean, um, where they come from. I'm all about energy. Yes. You see what I'm saying? There's a whole bunch of people who talk the talk, you know what I mean? They sound nice, they look nice, they have all this money and their words sound, you know, great, but Woo. their actions just don't match their words. And I gotta give it to uh, my boy, the 13th son. Yes. Umar Johnson yes. and Dr. Reverend Phil Valentine. Our brother Sanchez approve of these three people. Umar Johnson, Phil Valentine, and the 13th son. And I'm telling you, these three people have a lot of knowledge that you can apply as opposed to just stuff that make you, you know, hoop and a bunch of hoop and hollering. Yeah. This is deep stuff that you can apply and that'll open your eyes up to, to make sense out of all this chaos today. Exactly. Okay, people want to know what well, brother Sanchez, who did he listen to? Who the RFG chosen one listen to? We just told you y'all who our leaders are, who we really get a lot, well, I wouldn't say leaders, who our teachers are, okay, people? So there you go. I'm going to let my brother continue on. Yeah, man, basically, um, it, it, those those people changed my life, my life, man. I, before I met, before I met uh, bro Sanchez over here, um... I was listening to like mainstream people like um, Zaza Ali and mm -hmm. um, Professor Griff. Those people are agents, man. Anybody who's like, you physically see them giving their cell phone number out to the masses of people. Yes. You see what I'm saying? That's a no, 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 no bueno. That's a way to track you. Yep. That's a yep. way. You don't see a lot of people do it. Listen, you, can, you don't have to believe what we saying, okay? The man just told you that they agents and I stand by it a hundred percent based on my own research. And I like to listen to these people myself. Yeah, they got some good to say. They have to be attractive to you people. Yep. They have to be something that attract you to it. So what we're going to do, y'all, we're going to take a break and we're going to go on to part two. But we're going to deal with something so deep, y'all. Really what we came here for today. And that's the Y chromosome. Men are going extinct. We just wanted to give y'all that little bit of uh, introduction with Harry Potter. Because this is something that your kids look at all the time. You should know the hidden meaning behind this. Now listen, we're going to move on and we're going to get into part two. Stay tuned, people. Peace. Peace.